Hello, welcome back to my bench. If it's your first time here, hello, how are you doing? Um, and if you like, if you like what you see here, don't forget to uh, register and ring that bell. Uh, and uh, if you want to support me on Patreon, I would seriously like that a lot. It really helps. So, what have we got today? Well, we have a little box here that was made by somebody in Greece, I believe. Basically what it does is it takes a um, composite input from something like a Optimod 8100A or something like that, um, breaks it down into stereo left-right outputs. And uh, that's what this box does. It all does it through one little chip here. And I'll show you a picture of that. Um, there's the there's the chip. It's a TDA 1591. Um, basically, with a few extra components, it uh, it does the whole thing of decoding um, a uh, and composite signal into break it out into left and right. I got this in for repair because uh, the guy says that it sounds like it's distorted on one of the channels. And uh, we're going to take a look at it. Uh, I did a uh, video on building this little kit over here, uh, which is a uh, 2035D, which is the exact opposite of this. It takes audio in. I haven't got this in a box yet. Uh, it takes audio in left and right, converts it, and puts out um, composite with 19 kilohertz for the um, stereo pilot. So, uh, we'll take a look. I'll bring up the scope, and I'll hook power up to this guy, and we'll see what this is doing. There we go. And turn this on. And it's not doing anything. Hmm. Why you know do well you're not turned on. Oh. You know, sometimes it actually helps if you apply electromotive force to the device under test. Ah, turn it on. Alright. And it settled down. Well, look at that. Um, if you look at your scope up there in the right corner, you can see that one of the channels looks right. I've got this right now feeding it in with uh, 1,000 hertz on one channel, 400 hertz on the other, and 0.3 volts of drive. Uh, and um, that's what I'm getting out. Which channel is this? That would be the black one, whatever then that is. Um, the other channel is that one. So, basically what it looks like we've got is... Uh, which channel am I doing this with? I forgot to turn the blinking phone thing off. Um, okay, so the right channel is okay. And the left channel, which is uh, this one... Uh, is garbage. That is not what it's supposed to look like. The left channel is a thousand hertz. Um, yeah, and it's not right. Uh, it, it looks terrible. Well, we got to check a few things here first. I'm going to undo this. Well, let's undo this channel, the good one. Um, and get a scope probe. And I just want to check and make sure that everything is here. Scope probe. Let's see, that is grounded already to the scope, so I can take that off. It doesn't get in my way. I guess the first thing, uh, we should check the, uh, let's see. Where is my oscillator is on pin 2. 
So let's check pin two. Yes, we have an oscillator. I uh, wonder frequency-wise how that looks. Uh, all right, store. And there. And there. And it looks like we got 450 kilohertz, which is exactly what it's supposed to be. That's the uh, that's the advantage of a s digital storage oscilloscope. It's a regular oscilloscope, but it has storage functions. So we got that. Let's just to make sure. Let's look at here is the output. Let's see. The output pin is what uh, pin nine, pin nine and ten. Yeah, pin 10. So here's pin 10. And that's what we got on pin 10. Wow. Okay, and let's look at pin 9 on the other side. There's what we got on pin 9. That's, uh, that looks right. That looks wrong. Uh, okay. So the other thing we got to check, see if everything else is all right. <clears throat> the pilot detector is on pin 19. Probably won't see anything there. We don't. And the pilot uh, switch. Uh, pilot switch is, what, pin 18? We don't see anything there, but the pilot light, the little LED, is on. So that means we have some sort of voltage there. All right. <clears> hmm. <throat> the way they get the LED to come on is they, they just bias it against these two resistors that are in here. Um, so that we have, um, let's see, do the meter. Okay. So here's the meter. If we look at this, yeah, we got 1.8 volts. So it is showing that it's on. If I take away the input, Minus 1.9, let's see. Nothing. Okay, so, yeah. So, it is turning that on. All right, so that's this chip is working partially, but it's throwing garbage out that other side. Hmm. Well, I think the chip's bad, but we can find out. We have another one. He sent another one. So, let's shut this off disconnect everything so I can get it around and we'll take this thing out of here fortunately it's just all kind of tack soldered on here this is from an LPFM station LPFMs have this thing <laughs> it's called being broke they're not allowed to advertise they have to run on the good heart of their community, and they are part of the community, and good ones that are a part of their community will indeed make it. It's an uphill battle, and anybody that does it um, gets my vote for being good folk. All right. Whoops. Look at a nice little box he put this thing in. Well, that doesn't fit very well. The holes aren't drilled right. Okay, we'll just do it with one for right now then. We will fix that later. And he's got uh, 
pretty nice pieces of shielded cable because this end would be down at your transmitter site so you want to shield it of cable as you can get I think I'm gonna need to put the geek glasses on here hopefully I won't bash into you I am recording right yeah okay okay Pretty small. Yeah, that didn't work. Okay. Come on, Bubba. There we go. Alright, there's one. This is going to be one of those little boxes that, like so many things in in radio, where you hook it up, turn it on, make sure it works, and then never touch it again. So it's okay that this thing isn't built to survive um, any kind of serious pain. Let's see. This is the B+. Plus, which this works on 12 volts. That little 2035, it works on uh, one and a half to three volts. That's amazing. That's on. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so we got those on. Electromotive force reapplied and hook up the encoder. And now put this back up here. I decided, by the way, that my droid cam is pretty good for things like looking at the scope. That That's what I think I'm going to use it for. All right, so black goes here and red goes here, so all things remain constant. And here we go. Let's bring up the uh, scope and turn it on. There we go. 400 on the bottom. Huh, uh, 1,000 on the top. But I'll tell you what, let's, just to make sure that this thing is running like it looks like it is, it's defra, definitely separating stereo and left and right. Uh, make sure that the pin 2, yep, there's my 45 kilohertz. Pin 10, there's my output. <laughs> Completely out of phase because it's... It goes through a capacitor to get out there. And here's the output for the other stage. And it is... That's correct. And that's correct. The LED... Is not coming on unless I ground it. And if I ground it, it'll probably stay on no matter what I do. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, what the heck? Pin 18. Voltage. Nothing. And 1.9 volts.
You're on, but you're very, very dim. That's interesting, but it's definitely doing stereo. I mean, um, well, it would help if my power didn't go away. Very dim. What the heck? Over? Uh, let me just jump in here for a second and let you know. I uh, fiddled and fooled around with this thing for a good long time. And finally came to the conclusion that the tiny little FET on the bottom of the board in uh, this picture here was bad. Uh, it caused some other problems later on down the road. But then I also found out that there is a resistor and a capacitor uh, stacked on top of each other right next to that transistor, that, that FET. And the resistor under there was supposed to be 470K and ended up being 47K. So I removed the resistor and capacitor and replaced it with the right resistor and a new 0.1 microfarad 50 volt 608 um, capacitor and a new 7002 FET. It uh, is not easy working on this little board, let me tell you. It's pretty well jammed in there, but that's how the guy... Uh, that built this turned on the LED. So I couldn't let it go. I had to fix that uh, LED. The guy said he didn't care, but um, I can't let things like that lie. And uh, anyway, it's all fixed now. So <laughs> just thought I'd let you know how this thing actually turned out. So. Thanks for uh, stopping by, and uh, if you want to uh, support me, don't forget, go on to Patreon at uh, patreon.com slash aervblog, and please subscribe to the channel, give this a thumbs up, um, and uh, click on that bell if you want to know when I'm putting out more stuff. So, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next time.